Hello everyone and welcome to Life with Aprons. I am in the kitchen today and I want to show you how you can take an abundance of cherry tomatoes from your garden and you can can them so that you can pull that can on the shelf in the winter time for soups, for stews, for all kinds of purposes. Join me. All right, let's talk about canning tomatoes. Now, normally when you can regular tomatoes, you want to boil them in a hot water bath, plunge them into ice cold water, and that helps with the peeling process, and then you can put them in your jars. However, today we are doing cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes operate a little differently in that, um, you could try to peel them, although that would be quite time consuming because they're so small. I have an abundance of cherry tomatoes in my garden, so I am just going to can these tomatoes, and it is so much simpler than canning a regular stewed tomato, or what they would call a stewed tomato, uh, because you're not having to worry about the peels. Now, if you're someone who really doesn't like um, peels in, in your stuff, this might not benefit you. However, the peels are so small that you really don't notice them in soups, stews. Um, I use uh, a lot of tomatoes and chili in the winter time. Uh, this really is the easiest way for me to get rid of a ton of cherry tomatoes and still have lots of canned tomatoes on my shelf. So let's get started. What do we need first? Well. You're going to need your typical canning supplies. You want to make sure that your jars are clean. I have already washed my jars. Um, you're gonna want your lids. I have a scoop here just to help the process go easier. I also have some citric acid. You can use lemon juice or citric acid, but when you add this to your tomatoes, it just ensures that it has enough acid to be safe uh, for canning. So. You want a half a teaspoon per quart of tomatoes. I have a stainless steel funnel, and this is super helpful because we don't want a huge mess on the countertop, so I just put this guy right on top, and it helps funnel everything right into the jar. I am gonna put some links in the description for the supplies that I'm using so that you can go check them out for yourself. The first thing you're gonna do is, of course, get your cherry tomatoes. I have a full basket that my daughter picked yesterday in the garden and they are ready to go into the pot. There are two methods of canning cherry tomatoes. You could do a raw pack method, which means you would literally just take the tomatoes, put them in the jar, pour some hot water over it, and can it that way. The other method is the hot pack method, and that's the one we're doing today. Uh, you can actually fit more in the jar when you do the hot pack method. There are very few things that I actually raw pack. I usually tend to go with the hot pack method because I feel that it's just a little more flavorful. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to fill this pot up with cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom and just turn it on about a medium heat and let it cook for a few minutes and let it break down those tomatoes so that they're ready to go in the jars. Let's get started. My tomatoes heating on the stove and while that is going I want to talk to you about one thing maybe you're thinking Amanda 
You skipped a step. You didn't wash your tomatoes. Well, I have a little secret for you. I don't wash my tomatoes. And I know this might be controversial to many of you, especially in our culture where it's all about sterile environments and antibacterial soap and all of that. But one of the benefits of not washing tomatoes is that you get that pollen that settles on the tomato. That goes into your food. And that pollen that goes into your body actually helps you fight off allergies in the seasons, whether it's spring, um, fall, whatever. Whenever I am pulling produce out of my garden, I will maybe brush it off a little bit if I see something on it. Otherwise, I don't wash it. I just go ahead and cook with it. Um, when I make my herbal teas, I don't wash the herbs before I put them in my teas because I really want to get that pollen on there and into my body so that I can fight off whatever's in the air. And it works. For years we've been doing this and my husband in particular had really bad allergies and it has really helped his allergies and I can attribute it to this. It doesn't mean we're dirty, it doesn't mean we're gross, but we really have become such a clean culture that we have lost um, some of the good things that are on the produce before we wash them. Now that is for the garden. I would not say that for the grocery store because you really have no clue what is on the outside of your produce. But if it's coming straight from your garden, you know, if you see a leaf that's um, stuck on it, I, I will try to get that off or brush off anything that's, that, that shouldn't be there. But otherwise, I just keep it the way it is and I go ahead and can that way. So I hope you continue watching, <laughs> but we're going to finish heating this up and then we are gonna get the tomatoes into the jars and talk about how we can tomatoes. All right, my tomatoes are just about ready. Some have broken down, some have not. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Uh, you wanna watch your tomatoes and add water if needed, I add a little bit of extra water in here. Uh, because it was such a large amount in this pot, it took a little longer for them to break down. Um, about 10 minutes is what I did. The next step that we're gonna do, before, you can do this before you put them in jars or after you put it in jars. I do it before I put it in the jars, and that is adding your acid. Uh, this is, again, citric acid. It's a natural product that you can add to your tomatoes to give it that level to be safe for canning. Or you can add lemon juice. I have citric acid on hand and it's easy, so that's what I'm doing. Obviously, I don't know the exact amount that's in here, but I can usually gauge that it will be around five quarts of tomatoes for me. Okay, you wanna give that a stir to combine and then we are ready to put these tomatoes in the jars. I said this before, but I really like canning cherry tomatoes. They are so easy compared to regular tomatoes where I am peeling them and then putting them in the jars. It's quite a process. It takes up a lot of time. This doesn't take up nearly as much time and it's still very delicious. Uh, when you use them in the soups and the stews and the chilies and all of that kind of thing. All right, I've got my stainless steel funnel and I am going to add enough tomatoes to reach about an inch from the top. You don't want to fill it too high. You want to have about an inch of what we call head space at the very top. Okay, I have got all of my jars ready to go. It was about five quarts. And the next thing we're gonna do is put the lids on and process these guys. Let's talk about lids. There are several different kinds of lids that you can use. You can use the regular silver ball jar lids, the throwaway lids. 
I use those sometimes, but I really love these reusable lids. They are from Harvest Guard, and I will put a link in the description for this company. It is an American-made company. I really like this company. Um, I love their customer service. And these lids, I think I bought maybe four years ago, and I have them still. I've not had a problem with any breakage. They have lasted me for four years, and I've reused them and reused them. They come with a rubber ring that goes right on the top of it. It sits right in that lip there. And these rubber rings will last as well. Um, again, I've not had to buy new rubber rings because my rubber rings have also lasted. These particular types of lids, you're going to want to wipe your jar lid for either lids, the ball jar lids or these reusable lids. You wanna make sure that you have a dry space there. You just plop these lids right on, add a band, and you wanna stick your fingers in the center and you wanna screw it until the jar starts to turn. See how it's, it's starting to turn, so I'm gonna stop. You don't put these lids on as tight as you would the throwaway ball lids. These are uh, a little different, but if you're using the ball lids, just go ahead and put the lid on, wipe the rim off, put the lid on, put your band on, and tighten it before it goes into the hot water bath. All right, we are ready to can these beautiful jars of tomatoes. I know what you're thinking, what is that on her stove? This is actually my all-American pressure canner. It's in the biggest size that they have because I have a family of eight, so we do a lot of canning. Now, normally, if you're doing a hot water bath, you don't need a pressure canner. You just need a pot that the jars can be submerged in. So uh, you can use a stainless steel, a tall stainless steel pot, um, Ball makes enamelware pots specifically for canning. There are some other companies as well. I would encourage you to look into some stainless steel canning pots because those will be more durable than the Ball enamelware pots. I am using my canner as a hot water bath today so that I can can these. Like I said, you don't need a pressure canner. I'm not using it as a pressure canner today. I'm using it for hot water bath. I have filled the canner up about this much with water. You wanna make sure that when you're canning your jars, whether it's uh, pint jars, whether it's quart jars, that you have about an inch of water covering the top of your jars when you're doing a hot water bath. I am going to bring this to a boil. Then I'm gonna take my jar lifter. This is a very, very handy tool. I highly recommend it. Again, it'll be in the description. Ball also makes one. I don't like theirs as much as I like this one. This one is more durable than the traditional ball one that, they, uh, that their company puts out. I'm gonna use this jar lifter. I'm just gonna lift up my jars and place them gently into the boiling water, and that's when I start my timer. If you are doing quart jars, you want to process the tomatoes for 40 minutes, and that's in the hot water bath in the boiling water for 40 minutes. If you're doing pint jars, 35 minutes in the hot water bath. If you have any more questions about canning, please put it in the comments. If there's any videos that you would like to see, put that in the comments as well. I hope this video was clear and it took a little bit of the edge off of canning. Tomatoes is one of the most versatile things that you can can because like I said, you can put it in soups, you can put it in stews, you can put it in chilies, you can make it into a sauce. There are so many ways that you can use a jar of tomatoes on your shelf. Thank you so much for watching and remember, hit the like and subscribe button because there are more videos coming your way.